good morning, everyone. Welcome to Hatfield Congregational to our Sunday morning worship, and we'll start with some announcements. The uh, chat and coffee today is offered by uh, Cynthia Pica, so we do invite all of us to uh, later go into the, uh, the dining area, and we will have uh, some more fellowship right after church this morning. We thank Cynthia for the donation of the uh, chat and coffee. Uh, Linda right there, as you know, has the uh, gift cards for Stop and Shop and Big Y, and so if you need any of those, please see her. Uh, the Rerun Shoes Collection. We filled our box to overflowing, and I talked to Rerun Shoes. He is, I think, going away for 10 days, I think, down to Florida. Uh, but when he returns, we'll get that taken care of, and the, uh, he will take it off to Florence, from Florence off to Africa. So to everybody who brought in any kind of shoes, thank you very much. That collection box will be there for, like I said, maybe about 10 more days. So if you do have anything you want to bring in, please do so. Also, the second of our Lenten discussions will be taking place this Wednesday, and we are hosting, and the pastor from the Waitley Congregational Church, Reverend Cynthia, will be here uh, to offer her ideas on where we need to go on our Lenten journey. And so if any of you um, have maybe spoken to somebody else or to me or whatever, uh, we are looking for some uh, light refreshments afterwards. There's usually maybe about 30, 40 people that show up to these events, and uh, we, it's Lent. We don't want to go overboard. We don't want to you know, put out a big opulent spread, uh, but we do need to uh, welcome our guests. So if you can help by bringing in something, uh, whether a beverage or a dessert, uh, that'd be much appreciated. And again, that's this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Are there any other announcements from the congregation? Uh, the men's pancake breakfast. Linda? Okay, and so we see you after church. Perfect. Any other announcements? Okay, seeing no other announcements out there. Uh, the prelude for this morning's worship is prayer, and I will not try to say the name though. How do you want to, how do you say that? Yeah, what he said. So it's uh, it's prayer. <laughs>
Thank you, choir. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Anthony. That was a beautiful start to our worship. So whoever you are and wherever you are on your life's journey, you are most definitely welcome here at Hatfield Congregational Church. Um, Mark and I took off yesterday for the Super Saturday gathering down at Minichaug High School in Wilbraham. And as always, I thought it was an uplifting experience. Um, the, uh, the, the presenters were, were wonderful. The uh, worship um, was uplifting. And I walked away, because uh, Mark and I, we, uh, our morning session, we went to the same one, uh, was about a reading of Mark's gospel uh, by a professional actress who had memorized from Mark 1.1 to 16.9, and I think it was about two hours of reading just from memory. And uh, not reading, recitation from memory. And when you hear it like that, you hear it as a story, um, maybe like that oral tradition of those first earliest few Christians gathering together in a house and someone coming and telling this Jesus story, and it's just like a whole new perspective of the Bible and the Gospels, and it's a fresh look at it, something that maybe we've become very accustomed to, so we don't hear it anymore. We listen to it, but we don't hear it, and so I really enjoyed that. The uh, sermon was, was offered by a young woman who is a seminary student and uh, is legally blind, and she took a brand new look at the uh, story of the Good Samaritan, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, I bet you everybody here knows the basics of that parable, but she told it from a completely different perspective, a fresh perspective, my eyes were opened, and uh, those can only be good experiences. Um, the faith is never old, the faith is never unchanging, the faith is always fresh, and so I appreciated yesterday's Super Saturday. I'm, I'm hoping if you go to our Lenten discussions, maybe you get that new idea about the faith. And I hope also us here gathered uh, can also have some kind of a new revelation of who Jesus is today as we come together. So let us now turn to our call to worship. Put away your hesitations to come before the Lord. Quiet your fears and anxieties, for Christ welcomes us all. Look to the heavens for inspiration and assurance. Look around you, for Christ's presence is everywhere. Let us watch and wait with our Savior. Let us trust in the one who gives us life and hope. Praise be to God. Amen. Let us now join together in our unison prayer. In this place, our hearts find courage and conviction. O oh Lord, your goodness surrounds us. The trials and cares of life are still before you. Show us that you are near. Let your love be made known to us. We need this hour to remember who we are, to let you gather us under your wings. We need this time to feel close to one another, to recognize ourselves as brothers and sisters. We need reminders of the humanity and glory of Jesus Christ that empower our own discipleship. Hear our prayers and help us. Amen. All right, now we get to raise our voices to God. Let us turn to Red Hymnal number 150, O Lord, How Deep.
think we're all familiar with what happened in New Zealand at a house of worship. Uh, there's an awful lot of hatred out there in the world, uh, senseless, nonsensical, evil hatred. Um, let us counter that, even in our own small way, by sharing with one another the gift of peace. Any of the uh, almost young want to come forward? We're doing a little spring activity. That means, Mrs. Benson, push the granddaughter forward. Push her, push her, come forward. Come on, come on, actress, come on, just for a little bit. Come on forward. All right, that's all the youngest ones out there. All right, let me give uh, my wife Sharon a compliment. Come on, Sharon, you're young. See, compliment, huh, huh? I had to say that because I went to the uh, I went to the uh, the real folks dinner. I caught the end of it on Wednesday when they went out to the Waitley Inn. I went after the uh, Lenten discussion, and uh, this nice young lady right here, Sue McGlue, said the next time that I pick on Sharon, she's gonna have a pea shooter and she's gonna shoot me. So I'm no, she's got it. So I said something nice about Sharon. So no. <laughs> All right. So it's getting to. Okay, now hold on, we got a little bit of a problem here. Hold on, let me sneak through here, guys. So, we're closing in on spring. Okay, spring is, I think, is it Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday. Um, the next hymn, when you guys don't get to hear it when you're in Sunday school, is about trees and stuff like that. So we got that worked in. We got some flowers up here in the sanctuary. And uh, I think I like my seasons. Uh, but I'm ready for spring. Um, winter was beautiful. I love the snow, but I'm ready for spring. So what we're going to do is we got some zinnias, and we got some Shasta daisy seeds, and we got a couple of, uh, of uh, Dixie cups worth of soil, and I've got to get a pen out of here so that we'll know whose is whose. Then we're going to put them over on the, window shell, uh, on the windowsills, and then what we're going to do, hopefully they grow, we're going to put these outside and we'll have some flowers outside the church that all started during Lent. Because uh, Lent is this time when we kind of help our spirituality to grow and then we watch it kind of blossom into full bloom on Easter. But it takes time and it takes nurture. And that's the exact same thing that we're going to do here. So, let me open up these zinnias. Again, my wife Sharon was so nice to go out and buy these <laughs> yesterday, made a special trip to go out, so thank you, Sharon. Okay. I'm just a little bit nervous now with Sue over there. All right, so, having a little bit of trouble opening these. All right, so. Okay, guys. Let's put maybe a couple in each one of those, but you know what we should do first? Here, take this around and start by writing your name on a little piece of masking tape, and then we're going to put it on each cup. Okay. All right. So 
Maddie, there's yours. Put that on your yellow cup. Pass that over here. There we go. Perry's got that. Give you a couple of these. I'm going to put it in your hand. You can plant them. Okay, there you go. You're all from Hatfield. I'm assuming you guys know how to plant stuff, right? All right. There you go. Put your name on there. Same thing. So like I said, it takes some time. We have to nurture it. We got to give it soil. We got to give it water. And hopefully this is all going to grow and to be a big, beautiful plant for us outside throughout the, uh, the coming warmer months of spring, late spring and summer. Grab one of those. And I hope that you can, as you look at those flowers that we plant outside, that you can remember that we did this back in Lent. Okay, now I'm going to put, nope, put that, okay, went there you go. And so every time you see, oh, you got a ton of them, that's too many. And then every time you look at those, you can remember the fact that Jesus loves us and helps us to grow. All right. Beautiful. Okay, rip that little piece off. How you doing? Good. All right. What's the matter with that piece of soil? It's wood. Oh, it's wood? <laughs> well, that, that's fertilizer. All right. Did you get it, Casey? Not, not having too much luck there? Okay, put that on one of the Dixie cups. And we're going to pass... Got that tape right there? Here, put your name on there. Okay, put out your hand. We're going to give you a couple of seeds. There you go. All right. There. And then you put the seeds in the soil. Good job. There you go. And I'm going to take that. We're almost there, people. Almost there. That's for you. Okay. Put out your hand. You're never cold today. You've got a hood on. Okay. There you are. Okay. Oh, did you get this, the masking tape yet? Masking tape over here. There you go, Maya. You put your seeds in. Everybody's got their seeds in there. All right. We're going to take a little kid's sermon um, field trip, too. we got to go get the water. And remember, though, with this, they're going to hear everything we say. So we can't go out there and say something about anybody in here. You know what I mean? It's just like God. They can all hear. How can it be damp? It's been sitting in a bag since last spring. Well, we're going to give it a little bit of water. Wait, first you find the wood and the soil, then you find, wow. Okay, we're going to leave that there. You got your name on there? Okay, we'll be right back. I promise we're going to take a little field trip. Got to get some water. All right, so water a symbol of life in the Bible and we're gonna go give some life to these plants hold on we're gonna go right here it's quicker right here guys right here I'm gonna move in here all right put that on just a little bit looks good okay everybody line up and get some water in there all right you guys go in here perfect all right Oh, you like a lot of water. Okay. All right. There you go. Beautiful. Oh, they'll sink down in there. They'll sink. You got a lot of water, Casey. <laughs> All right. Did we lose everybody else? Are they with us? Okay. Now we're going to go put it on the windowsill. All right. Okay. You got yours? Let's put them right over here. Okay. Yours won't be thirsty. Yours, yours has got a lot of water, Casey. Okay, here we go. All right, so let's hope for the best that these do take off and grow for us. Thank you, guys. You're all set. Thank you much. There is money. Somebody left money here. That's yours? Okay, there you are.
Now time for our joys, our celebrations, and our concerns. Um, I'd like to again, again begin with a mention of yesterday and uh, our Super Saturday. Um, that was a, uh, a good experience. I think it was an uplifting experience. So I'd like to offer uh, my thanks uh, to all of the, uh, the presenters yesterday. Uh, to Rebecca Anderson, who was the preacher at yesterday's uh, morning worship. Um, all of the worship team and the organizers and all the session leaders, um, I, I left there a better person after Super Saturday, and so I'd like to thank all of who helped in that. Um, we did pray at Super Saturday. They, uh, they might have been like, I'm taking a while, I guess maybe 300 people there, and uh, they had each of our names on a little slip of paper, and they passed those out randomly so that we would be praying throughout the day uh, for some other person there. And I uh, hope Mark's not too embarrassed, but Mark got Mark Jalot. <laughs> so there's uh, 300 people, they're just passing out papers, and Mark taps me on the shoulder and says, look at this, Mark Jalot. <laughs> so I um, thought that was kind of nice. Um, also, I want to say a thank you to uh, John Novak. He, uh, we've been having some audio problems for our viewers at home and uh, on cable access, and uh, John came by yesterday, and uh, hopefully we're dealing with those uh, audio issues, and so I appreciate that as well. Um, as mentioned during our uh, sharing of the gift of peace, uh, let us pray for the 49 who were killed as they came together for worship in their mosques over in New Zealand, uh, for all of those wounded, for all of those who are grieving, and prayers for our world where this sort of nonsense is making sense uh, to too many people. Uh, we pray for a change. Um, also, we offer our prayers. This is offered by Glenn and Denise Wagner. Uh, Glenn Wagner retired 10 years ago from the Williamsburg Pharmacy and Hardware Store. The person hired to fill Glenn's position was Patrick Kroll, and, uh, who has now gone missing. Uh, there have been articles about this in the Gazette, and Patrick is like family to everyone at the store. He is well respected and sorely missed, and Glenn and Denise are offering prayers that he will be found safe and returned uh, to his family and to his friends. We also continue to offer prayers for Charlie Kellogg as he continues his recovery, prayers for Sue Gilman treating with her cancer, uh, prayers for Glenn and Denise themselves um, in their times of need and healing, prayers for Muriel Kilbovich um, also dealing with her cancer, prayers for Lynn Omasta dealing with her cancer, prayers for the health of Gene Sheehan dealing with his cancer, uh, prayers for uh, Bernie Lamprin, uh, who has returned home from what I understand, and uh, I'll try to see him this week, so we are glad that he returned home from Bay State, but still dealing with health issues, so prayers for Bernie, and a celebration prayer that Bill Parmeter is uh, finally back with us in the congregation. Very nice to have you back with us, Bill. So good to see you. Um, also, prayers continuing for Sarah and Jimmy Pigeon and their uh, newborn twin daughters. Sharon told me this morning that one daughter was able to come home, one is still in prenatal care, so we keep them in our prayers. Any other prayers, joys, celebrations, concerns you'd like to offer? I have a celebration and a prayer request. As many of you noticed, Colin, the young bearded man in the choir, is not here today because he and his wife had their little baby boy on the wee hours of Thursday morning. Um, Noah Joseph Lauren was born on Thursday, March 14th, and a prayer request, he has low blood sugar, so he has been in the NICU since he was born, and we're just hoping that he gets home soon. You, okay, congratulations, we'll keep him in our prayer, definitely. Any other prayers that you would like to offer? Yes, Bill. Uh, prayers for my cousins, uh, their father, my uncle, Clifford Bell, who passed away. Sorry for Clifford Bell, who passed away. Okay. Sorry about your uncle. I think it's, yes. Prayers for Brendan, who is still in a deep coma after having brain surgery in Boston. Okay. He's 28 years old. Yes. Prayers for the death of Brendan, he has to have to be Okay. Prayers for your nephew, <coughs> Cindy.
So the heat kicked on. I heard that the young man we prayed for, his cancer went into remission and he's going back to work. Okay. All right. Well, it's good to hear that the cancer is in remission. Hopefully all that other stuff will work out as well. Okay, seeing no other prayers, um, in the middle of our public worship, let us just take a couple moments of silence to hear Jesus' whispers. <coughs> Self-revealing God, whom we meet in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, be to us an overshadowing presence that gathers us together into the community of our church and also the community of our neighbors. Help us to hear your voice and to accept your word even when we disagree with it. Empower us that we may be authentic witnesses for Jesus Christ wherever we go, and especially among those whom we meet, whether we like them or not. May this be a part of our prayers to you, and may we grow more confident in the assurance that you hear us every single time that we turn heavenward with our prayers. Let us now join together in saying to Jesus the prayer that he himself gave us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All who find a home in the house of God are invited to extend its sheltering and serving ministry to all the world. We are challenged to do this in person, but also by sharing the gifts that God has entrusted to us. What sacrifices do we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, who gave up absolutely everything for us? May we be as generous as our faith and our circumstance in life allows us to be. sanctuary is a symbol of our love for you and for others. 
as our young people planted their seeds and we will hopefully watch them grow and bloom into beautiful flowers. We pray that these may be seeds of good works that we can do as this congregation uh, here for us and out into our world and that all of these things may flower in the faith that we may be able to express ever more beautifully. And these things we pray in Jesus' name as we offer these people our thanks for their generosity. Amen. Hey, we get to sing again. So hopefully you'll take us up on that and uh, raise the roof a little bit. Uh, there's no reason to be quiet during Lent. That was one of the things that we talked about yesterday. Um, there's a lot of people, they said, that can't sing well, but they can still sing. And that's glory and praise to God. So let us now sing whether we can or not. I'll still put my mute on. Uh, we will now sing together the reflecting hymn, Blue Hymnal, number 638, the beautiful hymn of spring in the bulb, There is a Flower. page 955 of your pew Bible. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, 
And it is from there that we are expecting a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. And our gospel reading for today is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get out of here, for Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, You go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I'm casting out demons, I'm performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to you. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me again until I come and you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock, our Redeemer. So back during World War II, the Allies were losing an awful lot of bombers over Europe. And someone came up with the idea, the very practical sounding idea, that the planes that returned, they would you know, have a survey of the fuselage. They would see where the, the bullet and the shrapnel holes were, and then they would send that information off to the manufacturers, and they would add more plating, armor plating, to protect the planes. And that all seems perfectly logical. But one insightful inspector completely disagreed with his plan of looking for those bullet holes. He said that what they should do instead is add armor to the planes where there was no damage to the fuselage. Now his argument was that they were studying the wrong planes. The damaged planes that returned, they returned. They made it back. They took the hits, but they got back safely. This implied that the places on the returned planes that had no hits, those were the places on the destroyed planes that they could not study that brought them down. So his counterintuitive idea was to add extra protection where there was no damage because those were the places that really led to the most damage. So the logic takes into account what is called the observer's effect. We base our decisions on what we observe, but there is this bias to that logic because it means we ignore all the stuff that we don't observe. In other words, we need to keep our mind open to what we don't see. And that observation limitation, obviously, I bet you I don't even need to give the rest of the sermon. Every one of you here knows already that that opens all kinds of doors to those of us who cherish the spiritual, the unseen reality, that God is right here, that Jesus is here, that the Holy Spirit is inside of us. All of those unseen wonders, they make sense. It's not illogical to believe in things that cannot be observed, but that is also a very slippery slope that says that maybe believing in Jesus is the same thing as believing in an Irish leprechaun. And hopefully we don't think of faith in leprechauns in the same way, but you know that logic is the same. So what's the difference between the two? And this is where that example of those bombers can be helpful. Putting the extra armor where there were no holes in the plane made a difference. You know, the, the, the numbers dropped on the planes that were destroyed from coming down with all the shrapnel that was shot in them. So it made a difference. It saved planes. It saved lives. It was observable. The unseen had consequences. So what about Christianity? 
Is this just pie in the sky, hopes in the resurrection? Is all of our faith just about what happens after we die? Or are there observable facts now to the unseen? Does believing in the unseen make a difference in our lives? And I think you've heard as well as I have that one of the reasons a lot of people don't go to church is they don't think that church makes a difference. That the way people who come here on a Sunday morning act it's not all that different from the way people who are off to brunch at, at some restaurant in Northampton act. And that's a condemnation of us because that means that our seeing the unseen isn't making a difference. And so the people who really take their faith seriously, like you here, I've seen you. You do act differently. And that difference in the way that you act should be observable to all people out there, and that should be the proof that the unseen is really real. That we're not just waiting for heaven, that it makes a difference here. I've seen that in you. I think you've seen it in each other. We're going to be taking a collection on the end of this month for that one great hour of sharing our Lenten collection. You know, we're going to be reaching out to people we will never see. We will never know. They will not know what dollar or $2 or 10 or $20 we put in that plate. We will not know where that makes a difference, but we give anyway because our faith tells us that's what to do. We belong to the United Church of Christ. We are not just Hatfield Congregational. There are so many gifts out there. Every time I go out to a wider church event, I'm impressed by how many gifts are in this church denomination. And all of those are the unseen observations that come to us because of our faith. A blind woman telling us yesterday in her sermon about the, that, that parable of the Good Samaritan. She saw things that I couldn't see. She was gifted in ways that I couldn't imagine. And she shared them because of her faith in Jesus. There's so many gifts out there. An actress, a professionally trained Yale actress who came and let me feel Mark's gospel. Not just study it like we do in Bible class where we go line after line after line, which I love. But she helped me to feel the mystery of Mark's gospel because she is making observable the unseen reality. And those are the kinds of things that we need to talk about. We are believers in the unseen reality, which is not illogical because we have made a difference. You know, part of the problem, though, is that we follow Jesus. Jesus is the, one of the least practical people in the whole world. The Pharisees, these sympathetic Pharisees, come up to Jesus. They say, Herod wants to kill you. Go the other way. Any person who would want to survive would go the other way. Herod is the king. Herod has soldiers. Herod has swords. You go the other way. Herod, or Jesus says to those Pharisees, you go tell that fox. You go tell that pretender. You go tell that liar. I'm coming anyway. And we know what happens when he gets there. That happens. So he is one of those observation difficulties for us because he doesn't stay around. He ends up going to the cross and dying. But he's like one of those planes that doesn't return. Those are the ones that we have to study. Those are the ones that can make the difference. Those are the ones that make sense when we make our life change based on that unseen reality of Jesus. Or take Paul in today's lesson that Jeff just read for us. He tells the people of Philippi, join in imitating me. Remember, Paul is just about the earliest Christian writer that we have anywhere. We have little you know, snippets here or there that date before Paul, but Paul is just about the earliest Christian writer we have. He is the one that is going out from you know, the Holy Land and spreading Christianity throughout the known world of the Roman Empire. When he goes to a city, nobody knows Christ. Nobody knows another Christian. Paul is the first one. There's no New Testament to pick up and read about Jesus. There's no grandma that puts the grandchild on the lap and tells them their first story about Jesus because there are no grandmothers who are older in the faith. This is brand spanking new. So what does Paul do? He says, look at me. Imitate me. What a burden that is. Can you imagine that if nobody knew what Christianity was, they had to figure it out through you and me and our example? Imitate me, says St. Paul? That's a huge responsibility. That's what Paul did that's how the church grew. There was no Bible. There were no grandmothers. There was only us. And when people looked at us, they said, I can do that. I want to be like that. Their unseen reality makes a difference in their lives. That's a huge responsibility for us. 
It's not hanging out in a beautiful church like this and saying, I've done everything I need to do for God. It's not putting some money in a plate and then letting other people do the work of God. It's up to us. Imitate me, said St. Paul. And it doesn't stop there. Some people did imitate Paul. They took notice of what was missing in the world that they saw in him. They were looking at those obvious holes in the wrong airplanes. And they said, there's got to be something wrong. There's something different that we need to find. So they started to look differently. And that's what faith is. Faith is looking differently. We've got all kinds of examples in the world. My Sunday afternoon, I love it. Today is going to be a cup of Earl Grey tea, sitting in the sun, coming through the window, reading the Boston Globe. If I was not here on Sunday morning, that Boston Globe would make me go into my room, shut the door, and cry. The news out there is horrible. I mean, we are bad people a lot of the times. and There's no way around it. It's not the devil doing it. We are bad people. We go to another person's place of worship, and we take out some kind of an automatic weapon, I'm assuming. We kill 49 people because they're worshiping God in a way that ticks this other guy off. He went from one country to another country to kill immigrants. He went from one country to another country where the whole country is based on immigrants just like the United States of America. We're weird up here. There's something wrong up here. And church makes a difference because we don't want to follow that example. We want to follow an unseen example. And that's what happened. People looked at Paul. They heard his message. They were like that gospel message I heard yesterday from Mark. You know, it was told as a story. And those people heard it and they saw it in Paul. And all of a sudden they started to have ability to look differently. They weren't following the example of a Herod. They were following an example of a Jesus or a Paul. And that comes on our shoulders now when he says, follow us, imitate us. Do you realize how important that is for us? We are the church to a whole world that doesn't know what happens beyond those doors. We are the gospel to people who don't read the Bible. We're it. We're the ones. We're the example. You know, we're closing in on the start of a brand new baseball season. I'm a Red Sox fan. I like my Red Sox. They got pummeled by the Yankees 14 to 1 the other day. 14 to 1. So I was reading in my Boston Globe newspaper last Sunday. This coach they have, Levine. I think Dana Levine. Where's Mary? Dana Levine? You don't know? <laughs> wow. All right. So Dana Levine is the pitching coach. And last year, the Red Sox have to get through the Yankees to make it all the way to the World Series. He knew that his pitchers were worried about the hitters in the Yankee lineup. They got some big guys. They got guys that can send out a ball with no problem at all. He knew that his pitchers were worried about that. He didn't go over about the statistics, the things that they could see. He knew all the things like you can't pitch here to this guy, you can't do this for this guy. He knew that. What he did instead is he had all of his pitchers come in and he had their, his staff come up with a video that just showed them striking out time after time after time Yankee hitters. So this pitcher striked out this one, this pitcher struck out that one. He showed them what they could do. He showed them what they themselves could not see. He helped them to see differently and they went right past the Yankees and they went all the way to take the World Series because he helped them to see what they could not see. That's our job. We have to help people to see what they are not yet able to see. There is no reason that there is this much wood in church. There is no reason. This place should be filled because the message out there is not a good one. It doesn't make you feel better. It doesn't make you want to get up in the morning and go and you know, just take on the day. This does. This is a place of hope. This is a place of peace. This is a place that can make a difference because we see differently. So let us take that responsibility seriously. Let's get rid of the wood. Let's fill this place up with people. Let's plant our seeds. Let's watch it grow. Let's watch the blossom on Easter just come out in all the beauty and glory that that could not stop. There's a lot of hope here, but it's up to us to make hope a reality. So in Jesus' name, let us be worthy people to be imitated. And we pray for this. In his most holy of names, amen. All right, now, I got instructions from our music director over there. 
Our next hymn, Where He Leads Me, we have to watch for the refrain, correct? All right, so when we're singing Blue Hymnal number 346, Where He Leads Me, watch where the music leads us, because <laughs> we've got to watch for the refrain. All right, I don't, just follow his lead. <laughs> Thanks. I hope that you're growing a little bit closer to, uh, to God every single day. And I uh, hope you want to come back maybe on Wednesday to hear Reverend Cynthia uh, talk about her subject, which I forgot is something about GPS and recalculating. It's based on the example of King David uh, from the Old Testament. So if you'd like to come, that is from 7 till 8 uh, this evening in our church parlor right over here. Um, Amy, did you want to say anything at this time um, about the uh, one great hour sharing you were saying? Or? Okay, so that is going to be taking place, though, on March 31st, uh, the One Great Hour of Sharing, and uh, there will be envelopes that are prepared for you at that time. Uh, but just know that this is the uh, UCC's Lenten collection uh, to spread the, the good work of Jesus throughout the world. All right, so it's time now for our benediction response. If you could turn to your uh, bulletins for one last time. Be confident and let your hearts take courage. Christ our Savior has met us here. His blessings for each of us outnumber the stars in the sky. The kingdom of heaven is our dwelling place. Our hearts are not here, Christ is our protector. Our spirits are strong when Jesus accompanies us. We will lift up our voices and shout for joy. May our greatness lead others to Jesus Christ. 
Let us go on our way with Christ as our constant companion and seek opportunities for service and witness wherever they may appear. We find our example and our inspiration in Jesus. In his name, we will show God's love and care every day. So let us go forth to love and serve the Lord in all that we are called upon to do.